Praise the Lord. It's Brother Jeremy here, and I want to start out by um, saying I hope you all are doing well. And um, God's laid this on my heart to start a series on here called Truth or Tradition. And you know, maybe some of you don't know, but I started out right down here um, in an enterprise church. And you know, God pretty much shook the foundation to get me out. And then uh, I knew I was supposed to be there in Hanging Rock. I didn't know why. And then uh, I ended up accepting a deacon position in a pre will Baptist church. And I just wasn't happy. Things wasn't right. Just didn't know what was wrong. And then one day a little preacher met me at my mailbox. And he asked me what the name of God was. And I said, Brother Chester, I said, um, Jehovah. He said, no. I said, well, Yahweh? Yeah, you know, I believe that there was three gods because I had been taught that. And, you know, a lot of people believe they're a Democrat because their family was a Democrat. Or they're a, they're a Baptist or an Apostolic or a Pentecostal because that's what their family was. But, you know, on TV it used to say, um, a church or a synagogue of your choice. But, you know, the Bible teaches us we don't have a choice but to follow the Lord and to let the Holy Ghost lead us where God wants us. God never told us to assemble where we want. He wants us to assemble where He wants us. And when He assembles us where He wants us, He's going to assemble us in the right type of ground where we can be planted and we can grow and we can stay there and be faithful and produce fruit for the others to help one another grow. But I want to start out, you know, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? But truth stood right before him. Jesus is truth. That's the greatest explanation I can give. Jesus is the word. He is God. He is truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Tradition is delivery, the act of delivering into the hands of another. Something that's been handed down. Like say, you know, we're going to eat every Sunday dinner. Every Sunday we're going to have dinner. And then their kids do that. That's a tradition that's been handed down. Nothing wrong with eating. But it says this is where it gets bad. The delivery of opinions, doctrines, which means teachings, practices, rites, and customs from father to son or from ancestor to posterity, the transmission of any opinions or practice from forefather to descendants by oral communication within written memorials, you know, there's traditions that's been handed down according to the Word of God. And this is where it gets wrong. If it's not handed down according to what God says, it's a tradition of men. It's a doctrine of man. And we're going to read what that says. And, you know, a lot of people says, well, you're telling me I don't have anything. You know, Jesus, he led them out as far as Bethany. And he blessed them. And they had great joy. But you see, they didn't have the Holy Ghost. They had to go on. And the day, of, the day of Pentecost, God filled them with the Holy Ghost. And you know, that was something the preacher told me. He said, you believed you received the Holy Ghost. Well, I, here I am believing something a man said. I didn't know I had no Holy Ghost other than the preacher told me. But the day of Pentecost, they were all together in one place in one accord. And when that mighty rushing wind, the very breath of God came down, God filled the house. He filled them, and they spake with tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. That unbelief in them, they were filled, and they knew that they had the Holy Ghost. You know, nobody will need to tell you, if you really got the Holy Ghost, you will speak in tongues, and you will know it for yourself, and that will drive out that unbelief. You'll know that you have it. You'll be a believer because God will bear witness out of your mouth. It says, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 8. And, you know, if you want to turn there, I'll give you a minute to turn there. You know, we've got to let God guide us and lead us in what we do. If not, we're doing things on our own. You know, people says, I don't have to come to church. But God said in the Bible that we must assemble to church. We must assemble with one another. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all ways, that means every way, Acknowledge him and he, he, 
He, He shall direct your paths. He will direct where you go to church. He will direct what body you assemble with. He will pick who is to teach you. And He will not give you somebody teaching easy beliefism. In all ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be to thy navel and morrow to thy bones. It says, be not wise. You know, you talk, talk about the Bible, and a lot of people says, well, I'll tell you what I think. God says, be not wise in your own eyes. Don't be what you think. Be what you know according to the Word of God. And you know, we can't take out one verse and make our salvation. You know, I was always taught we were given bookmarks, the Romans road. This is how to lead people to God. And if you've been taught that this morning, I want you to think about something. The Romans road is after the book Acts. Any church historian will tell you, or you can read, that the church began the day of Pentecost. The church, Acts, was how people got into the church, how they set up the church. So you skip to the next book, Romans. These people have already followed the plan of salvation. They've already obeyed Acts 2.38. Just like me today, to get up and to come out here, I had to do this. I had to believe that God would help me do this to be able to help somebody else. I have to believe that when I get out of bed, that I'm my feet, that I'm going to be able to walk. You know, we have to believe. We have to keep believing. People say, well, once saved, always saved. No, he that believeth on the Lord shall be saved. That's today. That's tomorrow. That's the next day. That's saved from grief. That's saved from pain. That's saved from sorrow. That's saved from everything. If we believe on the Lord, God will save us. That's not just some easy cop-out verse said, believe in thine heart and confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. I'll tell you what, when you get the Holy Ghost, there'll be a confession made. When you believe in him, the Hebrew people, to believe meant to obey. You can't live in sin and say, I'm, I believe in God. You might believe that there is a God, but you don't believe in him or you would flee from the wrath to come. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. You know, it, it gives a warning here. And you know, like I said, I come out of something that wasn't right. And if you're out there, I'm not telling you that you don't have anything. I'm telling you what my pastor told me. There's more for you. You can repent in any church, but you will not make it to heaven in any church. God's coming back after his church. He's not coming back after every church. He's coming back after his church. You know, we spoke at church the other night, Brother Glenn, I think, about the bond woman and the free. The Bible says there's more of the church of the bond woman than there is the free. There's a, more people sitting in church that's still in bondage than those that have been set free from their sins. Colossians 2 and 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You know, they're teaching worldly things, worldly doctrines, manly doctrines, not God's doctrine. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 through 9. And you know, this is, you look in the world today, people aren't even attempting to live right. And everybody says they've got God. But people haven't obeyed the plan of salvation. When you truly get a hold of God, they used to say, if there's no change, Jesus, there's no change. And God, if he has all power, he lives with inside us. He's got the power to change us if we want to change. It says, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart, their mind, this is the heart, their thoughts, the very core of their being is so far from me. If you look, we're just, we're in the days of Noah once again, where people are just going about their daily life with no thought of God. The days of Sodom and Gomorrah, all this sexual perversion going on. And they're expecting everybody to think it's okay. It's not okay. It's sin. It says, but in vain, they do worship me. Vain is empty, worthlessness, having no substance, value, or importance. Vain do they worship me. Teaching the doctrines, teaching for the doctrines, the commandments of men. 
they're teaching what men command you to do. Men say, just believe on the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Nowhere in the Bible did anybody get saved by saying, believe on the Lord Jesus. Nowhere in the Bible did anybody get saved by saying the sinner's prayer. If you read from the book of Acts on, because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are really still under the law because Christ has not died yet and rose again until the very end. So Acts is the beginning of the church. It's where Jesus told them to go, that he was going to set things up. Mark chapter 7, verse 13 says, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered. And so many such like things do you. You know, the Bible is meaning nothing to so many people today. You look around and you see all the atheists and the chaos. Why? Because our, our government's condoning sins, but yet they're saying they believe in God. They say, I'm a man of faith, but we're going to let people in the bathroom with your daughters and things. No, they're not a man of faith. They're a faith in the doctrines and the commandments of men. God said, come out of her, my people, and be part of pakers of her plagues. You know, we can't, we can't go along with these things. We can't go along with sin. God's people are not going to go along and support sin and then say, I have faith in God. If we have faith in God, we'll do things the way God says we'll do them. Says, making the word of God in an effect. Look around today. Why? It's because people have left the name of Jesus Christ. And, you know, I invite you to go up to the Iron Library, just like I did. I had a whole table full of books out. And you can go to the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 2, page 263, and the Catholic Church openly admit that the original apostles, by commandment of Jesus Christ, baptized for the remission of sins in the name of Jesus Christ. And they admit that they changed it because they said it must have been some special dispensation from Jesus to the apostles. Well, in the book of Malachi, Jesus said, I am God and I change not. So if that's what God gave to Peter and Paul, that's what God expects us to do today is be baptized for the remission of our sins in the name of Jesus Christ. People says, I went to the altar and got forgiven. Really sit and study and pray what remission means. To get your sins forgiven, you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other way. 1 Peter 1.18 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed by it with incorruptible things as silver and gold, for your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. You know, the Bible says down here in Deuteronomy, and we're going to stop here, and hopefully, Lord willing, the next one will be on, we're going to go to the Godhead, on one God. And um, the Bible says, people say, Well, I know my mommy and daddy went to heaven, and I know my grandpa and grandpa went to heaven. God didn't tell you to believe what your mommy and daddy believed. God didn't tell you to believe what? Listen to this. Deuteronomy 27, 16 through 18 says, Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, and all the people say shall say, Amen. Amen. Said In verse 17 it says, Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. You know, before I came and before I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and God filled me with his sweet Holy Ghost, I was blind. I read, read the Bible and it was just like any other book. I didn't have understanding. Yeah, I taught from it. I preached from it. But I really didn't have understanding. But when I come out and I told God, I said, I said, show me what's right, God. I said, I don't want to, I lost. I'm, I'm in charge of leading my family. I'm the head of my home. I need to know what's right. And when I went to sleep that night, God gave me a dream that I, I was leading my son and another family member. There was two paths, one branch to the left and one went to the right. We know that the right is the position where Jesus said it's the place of power. He's that one God with all power. And it's the side of the sheep and the left was the side of the goats. And I took my son and this other person up the side of the goats, the sides that won't listen to what's right. And I caused my son and the other person to be lost. And I called the man that was the pastor out there when I woke up and I said, we need to meet. 
And I left, and then I called Brother Glenn Jenkins, and, and him and Brother Johnny Sturgill baptized me in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. And I tell you what, I went and told everybody I seen. I was calling people. I said, I feel so clean. I said, Clorox couldn't. Ajax couldn't get me this clean. I, just, I felt something that I had never felt before because all the years I had been in church before, I still carried away around the bondage of my sin. And when they baptized me that name and called the name of Jesus Christ over me for the remission of my sins, I received forgiveness for the first time in all the years that I went to church. My sins were washed away, and then I had to go on and tarry until the night that I was worshiping God, and he filled me with the Holy Ghost. You know, the preacher told me, they always said, if you speak in tongues, you're of the devil. I tell you what, the Apostle Paul said, forbid not them to speak in tongues. If the Apostle Paul, which is a greater man than anybody walking on the face of this earth today, says forbid not, I tell you what, if your pastor's telling you that it's wrong to speak in tongues, you better get out of there and you better run fast and not look back you know we're going to address things this week we're going to get on the Godhead we're going to get on baptism and we're going to get on the Holy Ghost and then probably how we must live after we get the Holy Ghost people says I got the Holy Ghost amen but does the Holy Ghost got you people says I've received the Lord Jesus has the Lord Jesus received you you know it says well I'm happy with the Lord is the Lord happy with you you know, this ain't to tell you don't have nothing. You know, I had something. I had repentance. And God was a long-suffering God. But it come to it where God told me I was going to have to make a decision. And I tell you what I told that man. I said, I need to go. i got to get the hanging rock. i got to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. I told my wife and my brother-in-law, I said, I'm going to hell. My wife said, you're a deacon in the church. If you're going to hell, we're all in trouble. I said, I can't put that judgment on everybody else, but for me, God showed me that I haven't been baptized in his name, that I'm going to hell. And you know what? We come out, and my wife received that revelation, and now we've both been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. By his grace, we've been both filled by the Holy Ghost and both trying to live a holy life. And God has made that change in my life, our life, and I want to tell you that if you're out there in tradition that there is a better way it's the only way to come off the path of the left and come out to the path of the right and I want you to pray as you watch these and ask God Lord am I following the traditions of men am I following the doctrines of men or am I following after your word God give me eyes to see Lord, just like in John chapter 20, it says he opened their understanding. Pray, God, open my understanding to what's right. When God opened my understanding to this one God way and this Jesus Christ way, I looked at the Bible in a whole different way. It was like it was in a lie book. I seen meanings that I had never seen before. I got understandings that I couldn't find on the internet or anywhere else because I had a relationship with the author. I want to thank you for tuning in to Truth or Tradition. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow or the next day, there'll be a lesson on one God. Just pray that God will speak to you and that God will show you the truth. If you're in Truth or Tradition, we need, I think it's Colossians 3 and 9, says, for everything we do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Have you been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? If not, you've not done all. You've not, the word called over you or the deed of baptism, if it wasn't done in Jesus Christ, you've not done all in the name of the Lord Jesus. You're still in sin. I love you from the bottom of my heart, and I hope that this helps somebody. God bless.